And welcome to the Bob Donabalt Show. I'm Al Shepston. Well, the Red Redbirds of Illinois State are 2-0 and since we last met. They beat Ryder in a non-conference game at Horton Fieldhouse and then came back and went on the road against Omaha and beat Creighton up in Omaha. Quite a win for the Redbirds and to put them in a three-way or a two-way tie for third place in the Missouri Valley Conference. We'll look at highlights of that game plus look at preview of the game coming up against the Drake Bulldogs. In between all of that, we'll have player profile with John Pemberton this week and the official word on over and back. All of that in just a minute. Goal is excellent. Those that are willing to meet the challenge are rare. But at Illinois State University, the commitment to excellence is strong, whether it's on the court or in the classroom. And the Redbird Club is helping to meet that goal. The Redbird Club is committed to helping athletes excel in their game and in their studies. But we need your help. Whether you're an alumni or simply a Redbird fan, join the Redbird Club and be committed to excellence. Become a member and meet the challenge today. Redbirds of Illinois State have gone to 5-3 and three in the Missouri Valley Conference after winning on the road against Creighton Blue Jays. Creighton is also now 5-3, and three and, and uh, I think if you really had to look at that game, and, you know, we'll say this every week, they're all big wins from here on out, but uh, a pleasing win from the standpoint that Drake won seven in a row. You'd uh, struggled a couple of weeks earlier, then you're playing on the road, and so to come away with a win against the Blue Jays is uh, pretty impressive. You know, a sports writer from the Omaha paper, <clears throat> excuse me, the first question he asked me last night is, how big a win is this for you? And I said, you know, that's exactly the same question I was asked after the Bradley win in Peoria. I said, a win is a win. There are 14 of them. You just battle your tails off, and then when it's all said and done, you just try to see where you are and whether you've had a, chan uh, a chance to compete for the league championship. Uh, it was a good win for us. I think that was the way, best way to say it. Uh, a win without Tony, and then we put ourselves into a position where uh, uh, we played fairly effectively throughout most of the contest. Well, now, Creighton came in here winning <coughs> seven in a row, uh, and this is also a game where we out-rebounded the opponent. One of the few times that's happened this year, talking to you before we started the show, you mentioned this was like some of the old teams where we got the ball off the boards and put it back in on offense. Well, there were three or four things, Al. Number one, uh, we get some steals and make some, uh, some baskets out of it. Uh, secondly, we get some put-back baskets. Cliff gets a couple. Johnny gets one. Uh, we go to the free throw line, and we're 19 for 22. And fourthly, I, I, we get a lot of scoring inside. Cliff gets some scoring. Uh, uh, John Pemberton and Sonny Roberts between them get eight points. Uh, Gerard Coleman gets ten points. So you get about a, a, a tr uh, you know a significant amount of uh, amount of, or a number of your points from that area. And then of course Matt has the uh, the very fine offensive game, getting 19 points and, and five for five, and and it makes a big steal late in the ball game after Pemberton had knocked two free throws in, steals it, scores, is fouled. It's a five point play, and that really pushed him out of the game. Uh, we will see that play, by the way, later on in these highlights, but uh, you mentioned Matt. He, Matt has really been, if you take away the injuries, he's been pretty consistent this year, and I think overall most of your players, barring the injuries, barring the illnesses, and we'll get a little bit more to the injuries later, have been fairly consistent, your senior players. It's the uh, backup players, the sophomores, that have been somewhat inconsistent. Well, I, I, there are a couple of things that we need to keep in mind. Number one, seniors should be a little bit more consistent because they've been through it more often. Mm -hmm. And I said before the season was, in, uh, was started, as the seniors go, so go the Redbirds. And I think that if you'll look at our wins and you'll look at our losses, I think you'll see that that's pretty much on target. I think mm -hmm. that the, the younger kids have made significant, significant strides forward. But they're still young kids, and unless they're a Hersey Hawkins or somebody of that magnitude, uh, they're going to be up and down a little bit. They're, they're still younger kids physically as well as emotionally, and it just takes, you know, maturity yourself. You have children. It just takes a longer period, or it takes a long period of time, and I don't think it's fair to expect as much out of a sophomore in the final analysis as you do a senior. Yet uh, the success that, uh, or the pressure that Blair and Jackson have been giving us in the backcourt, uh, good play there by Ricky. The number of uh, defensive problems that they create for our opponents, Gerard's inside play, have been really keys. And then, of course, Johnny and Sonny in the play that, that we've gotten out of them recently, 
uh, is significant because if you can get between the two of them, you can get eight points and six or seven rebounds and so on and so forth. That's all part of the, uh, the pieces of the puzzle. Now, Tony Hollifield hurts a knee on Saturday, and uh, it makes it even a little more tenuous from the fan standpoint looking at the team. Uh, after being with you for 10 years, I almost feel like I know this answer before I ask the question, but do you change anything when you lose a player like Tony? What, do you, you know, what, what happens to your game plan? Well, uh, it, it changes from the standpoint of, of, uh, of uh, matchups and things like that. But, no, you really don't change. I don't think you're in a position where you can significantly change what you're doing. Now, if our offense was designed for one player, uh, a la Hawkins, and all of a sudden Hawkins is injured, well, now I think you've got to do uh, a drastic amount of changing. Uh, what it does is it requires different kids to fulfill particular roles. And what we did in this particular contest was really slide Matt into what we anticipated Cliff doing and, and told Cliff, well, you play part of Tony and part of yourself. So there was a little bit of a change there. But from a game plan, no, I don't think so. You change roles a little bit, but not game plans. We're, our, our program is predicated on a system. And if that system goes well, then we have a chance to be competitive. One of the, Creighton, uh, one of the other questions last night, that uh, Creighton had not been turning the ball over very much. And they said, did you do anything different in your defense? And I said, I'm not smart enough to figure out anything new to do or tricky to do. And I said, I say that a little facetiously, but our system is predicated on doing what we do best. It's simple, but do it very, very well. And if we do it very well, then we have a chance to be competitive. And when we don't do it so well, we aren't very good. What is the status with Tony now? I almost feel like I should bring the doctor out here first with you guys. What, where is he now with his knee injury? Uh, it's on a week-to-week -week basis. Um, he missed the Creighton game, uh, probably will miss the Drake game, but that hasn't been determined yet. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, actually, it was like a clip. Uh, Cliff got knocked down in practice, and as he got knocked down, he fell into Tony's knee, and, and uh, you know, that's how it happened. Uh, I don't... Uh, I don't know. It's somewhere they say between one and three weeks. I don't think the question is uh, is when will he be back, is when he does come back, how mobile will he be, right. and how much time has he lost. You know, Cliff's not the same player, especially offensively, that he was prior to the injury. Randy is still suffering, I think, at times the effects, the timing, uh, uh, just the chemistry with the other players, so on and so forth. I, I think it's difficult to, to totally recover from that particular type of injury in a very short period of time. Well, a 13-point win in Creighton puts both teams at 5-3, and three, both teams tied for third place in the Valley Conference. Back with our player profile with John Pemberton in just a minute. Uh, basically setting screens, rebounding, some scoring here and there, um, helping to break the press, doing little odds and ends, really trying to help the team get rolling and pick up slack if there's needed slack and rebounding or, you know, filling gaps basically right now. Um, first couple games I wasn't very comfortable, but now I really settled down and started going. Um, Iowa was an experience. That was the first time that he had ever pulled me out that far and had me taking the ball out against the press, and they put on a mean press. <clears throat> Probably posting. I need to be able to seal my man and keep him on my butt. Uh, scoring in and around the basket and finding more ways to score. Rebounding, and uh, rebounding is basically the big one. I really need to be able to track the ball down and get up quicker and get the ball. We'll need a lot more rebounding the rest of the year. And then next year, we'll need a lot of rebounding out of me. Free throws. I've been hitting my free throws lately compared to my freshman year. I'm handling the ball. I can handle the ball well for a big man. My rebounding has improved. I get 
seven against Viola, and I got six against Wichita, or Tulsa. So I've improved in that area, but not as well as I'd like to. Among the team, I feel that I'm one of the stronger ones on the team. But there are other ones out in the league which are probably stronger than me. And uh, I played a couple guys in the Big Ten, which were very strong. And for me, I need to get stronger. This summer will be a lifting season again. Uh, because I played against Hill, and he was strong. But for right now, I'm doing well. I feel I've done well this last summer. I did well. Yeah, they. Uh, my legs got too big toward the middle of the year. I started weighing up around 247. The coach had a, was not very happy with me. So I kept lifting with my upper body, but I've really cut down on my legs. And I've taken off about 17 pounds. And coach wanted me more mobile. So that's what we've basically tried to do is cut the weight and keep, you know, so I'm quicker. Um, no, I saw practice as a senior, so I kind of knew what I was getting into. But my roles have changed since I've gotten here. When I was a freshman, they wanted me more out on the floor. And uh, they took away a lot of my inside mobility. They said, you know, we don't want you in there because we had, like, Bill, Jay Teagle. And then when those two quit, they moved me back inside so i've been trying to it seems like every time i get adjusted to a role they switch me around like all of a sudden in the middle of this year they just push me back out into the floor to help break the press so it takes some time to get used to a role so that's what i'm doing right now yes i am next year i hope to uh help break the press i hope to play a little bit on the floor it's kind of like sunny get a couple jumpers out on the floor but I would like to really much play inside. That's where I like to play. Yeah, um, I didn't make a good adjustment as a freshman. I really dinked around with everything, and it kind of hurt me in the grade department. And sophomore year, as a redshirt, I had more time to... Uh, the pressure wasn't quite on me, so I had more time to study. And my grades really picked up. And now this year, I've learned to juggle basketball and grades and you know, everything else I want to do. And my grades have improved quite a bit. Uh, the dunk on the Russians, that was a good one. My career high against Chicago State, was it? Yeah. Um, in Loyola, I played well. In. And in Iowa, beating Iowa was a big one, too. Um, overall personality, um, on the court, it's we fight, we push each other, we drive, we try to achieve what we can achieve. Off the court, we all get along pretty well. We we don't do a lot together, but we do a, you know enough so we stay as a close knit group. If we're having a, an inbounds throw, let's say from the 10 second line coming into the front court, and the uh, on the throw, the ball is deflected into the back court by an offensive player. In other words, he muffs it into the back court. He can go back there and pick the ball up and resume his dribble, and we don't have over and back because we've never established any team control in the front court. And that's the key word is team control. There is no team control on a throw in. So when that throw came into that player and he muffed it into the backcourt, it's still nothing. He can go get it. A lot of players don't realize that either. They'll kind of try to stay away from the ball. And uh, actually, they can go get that. Now, what you see called a lot of times, especially on a throw in from the 10 second line, is the throw that's made to a player who has left his feet in the front court jumping possesses the ball while he's in the air and then lands in the backcourt you have to look at where his previous established position was you know on the court and that was in the front court so therefore he gained control of the ball still established in the front court even though he was in the air and then when he came down he came down in the backcourt which made it over and back
university, the Bulldogs, are having themselves a pretty fine year, although in the Valley they have, I want to say, slipped somewhat, but we know that it can be pretty competitive in the Valley. Slipped from a uh, record standpoint, four and four. They beat Wichita. Uh, we weren't able to beat yes. Wichita. I was going to mention that. They did beat Wichita State, and yeah. not many teams have no, been able right. to do that. And Wichita had an exceptionally fine basketball game at Wichita in order to beat them. Now, they get beat. Uh, what's standing in your mind is Bradley had one of those unique nights, mm -hmm. and uh, Gary wasn't able to get it under control and, and, and got beat. But it, it's a fine Drake basketball team that has the potential to be in postseason tournament play. Um, uh, they've got an excellent inside post player. Uh, Martin is back running the offense. Uh, James is scoring well this year. And, and then they've complemented that with a couple of other perimeter scores, and it's a quick, athletic team with a big, powerful postman inside. And uh, the Drake ISU series, like most of the I, uh, ISU uh, Valley series, have been close and competitive. And, and uh, this ball game last year it was a heck of a basketball game, going right down to the wire, of course, with Derek stealing the ball right at the end of the game to uh, to ensure the victory. But uh, uh, it's it's a it's a team that can run the transition. We'll both play a lot of man-to-man -man defense. Uh, they'll try to get the ball down inside. They have a motion offense, and they uh, they really work the post area. And and, and uh, that's James getting a bucket right there. He has an excellent uh, touch on the ball. They have good three-point shooters. It'll be it'll be a difficult uh, difficult contest. Big man inside. People might remember him from last year and say, ah, he wasn't too good last year. Although he did suffer his sophomore year, really labored. <coughs> He's really come along. Uh, uh, Bart uh, was a player of the year for a freshman in the league two years ago, and and from what Gary Garner has told me, Gary said he went through a little bit of a slippage as a sophomore and wasn't as effective, and yet he went home. I I know this past summer and worked exceptionally hard at his game. Came back and is having a very fine year at about 6'10". He's a big, powerful youngster that can score down around the basket in a lot of ways. And, uh, uh, yeah, he's just a totally different basketball player than he was a year ago. In some respects, he reminds me of Sasha Radinovich, although I don't think he has the outside shot of Sasha. No, he stays closer around the bucket, but I think there's a lot of similarities. I think you'll see as, uh, as the crowds or fans start to watch Gallagher from... Uh, uh, Chad Gallagher from Creighton now, they'll see the same kind of basketball player, powerful, strong inside, the ability to shoot over you because of his size, not because of great jumping ability, but really good size and strength around the bucket and creates a lot of problems uh, defensively for you. Are we, in some respects, looking at a team very similar to the Redbirds? Well, I think it's a team that's probably a little bit quicker than what the Redbirds are, and I, I think the post play is a little bit different in that uh, uh, Frederick is is bigger than than what our kids are, uh, and and the other thing that I would say is that they they probably have a few more kids that are shooting the ball mm -hmm. well from the perimeter right now. Yeah, uh, Matt shot the ball well for the first time in in three or four ball games last night. Uh, Jeff ha hasn't been into his rhythm, and and I think that affects us. And I don't think Cliff is shooting the ball as well as prior to his injury. So. I think the scoring is a little bit more in their advantage. And as you can see, just watching the film, although 41 is, is not the big, big Frederick kid, that they'll have a lot of, of, of really quick, good athletes out on the floor that can do a variety of things and, and can score well. And Martin is one of the very best right. point guards in, in the league. He's definitely a sweet shooter. We'll be back and have our questions to coach in just a minute. Well, you didn't give all the bags away. Right? The goal is excellent. Those that are willing to meet the challenge are rare. But at Illinois State University, the commitment to excellence is strong, whether it's on the court. Many thanks to all of those who wrote this week. Unfortunately, we are only using one this week, but we had probably six or seven extremely good questions. Uh, I kind of pulled this one out of the hat. It was one of uh, several very good questions. Uh, this one comes from Normal Illinois, right here in town. Uh, Craig Patrick asks you, how do the players compensate for missed class time while on the road? That's part one. Everybody has two parters. And how's the, how does the team fight boredom and maintain concentration on these trips? Well, it, it, the first part of it, from an academic standpoint, it is difficult. It is a very demanding situation. Like, we're flying back uh, last night at, at uh, midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning, and, and, and the kids are studying. And, and uh, 
Uh, we put study tables up d during the, uh, uh, the time that we're gone so that kids can get to uh, uh, an area where they can concentrate. And then they have to pick up uh, for missed time when they get back, uh, seeing tutors, uh, visiting with teachers, going over notes, so on and so forth, uh, uh, picking up for missed labs, whatever the situation is. It is very demanding on them. Now, the second thing is the boredom thing isn't as big an issue as people might think simply because we spend a, an exorbitant amount of time in meetings and preparation periods and studying film, reviewing uh, what we need to, uh, to do uh, for this particular contest. Uh, so there isn't as much time as you might anticipate. So the boredom factor I don't think really is as big as, as you would anticipate. Okay. Uh, many thanks to those who did write in once again. If you do have a question for Coach, Give us a, a letter or drop us a line here at Telecable of Bloomington Normal, The Bob Donawald Show. The address is 1202 West Division, Normal, Illinois, 61761. And if we do use your letter on and the And Al air, doesn't go on a trip, we'll get you a bag. <laughs> we'll get you one of these bags right here. Converse bag, very nice bags, and so do drop us a line. We'll try to get to each and every letter. Even if we don't use it on the air, I might incorporate some of these questions during the course of the show, so be watching. That's our Bob Donawald Show of Illinois State University uh, for this week. See you next week, same time.